Hey, my name is Adam. I'm 18 and from Lithuania. I finished school here and have had no luck finding a job. Some of my friends told me about lots of jobs working on farm in North Island. I found this website where I only had to pay 100 to be secured a job. It said I will get good pay, help with accommodation and that work will be easy. My family gave me the money to pay the agency and get to a Northern Ireland. But when I got here, things were a lot different than I thought. The accommodation I was promised it was a small cabin on the farm property and I had to pay £100 a week to stay here. There were six of us sharing the space with no heat or electricity. The farm made us work long hours without breaks. The only time we were able to get into a nearby town was once a week when the farmer arranged for a van to bring us in to buy our groceries. He only let us shop at the Lithuanian market shop and it was so expensive. Although I was working legally, I didn't know how to access any other help or jobs. The farmer took our passports. I wanted to go home, but after rent and groceries I couldn't save enough to afford it. How did this happen to me? From the streets of Jakarta to the streets of Europe, labor strikes, workers' demonstrations and protests over a range of labor issues, such as minimum wage, job cuts, labor rights, working conditions and compensations are a common sight. The focus of ILO include promoting labor rights, good income and social protection for all workers, as well as encouraging decent employment opportunities. I'm curious to know what exactly is the definition of decent work and how to best balance between the demands of workers' rights and the need for companies to have productivity, competitiveness of products, as well as quality of work, since industrial disputes, labor strikes and protests that quite often end up being far from peaceful are still a serious problem everywhere. Decent work. Just a quick definition of what is decent work means and you know how to actually you know, align the perception from the employer side as well as the employee side yeah. and what decent work Correct. Yeah. actually well, means. Decent work means having a job which gives you a decent income, which means that you can feed yourself and your family and provide for your family in conditions that you and me would think is acceptable. That's the first thing. Uh, secondly, it is respect for the workers' rights, so the right to organise, mm -hmm. to bargain, uh, to be safe from discrimination, also to make sure there is no forced labour, there is no child labour. Uh, these are things that matter, you know. Uh, so rights as well. Thirdly, social protection. Uh, it's really important that workers have health care, have pension coverage. Unfortunately, 70% of workers in the world do not have even minimum social protection. I see in this factory there is a health insurance scheme, I see the clinic, so there are ba basics of, 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 of social protection in place. And the last pillar of, of decent work is what we call social dialogue, that is to say when there are problems, when there are issues to be resolved, people sit down and they talk about them. It's not just a matter of somebody deciding it's going to be like that. So I think uh, those pillars of decent work uh, are the definition, and I think they're also present in the factory we're visiting today. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's it's encouraging. A, there's a sort of the tripartite, there's a three element uh, right. you know, when it comes to dialogue. You, know, you have the employers and you have the employees, and then you have like a third party in this instance, maybe the. Well, the tripartite, as we call it in the ILO, mm -hmm. is uh, the three parts of governments, yeah. then employers and workers. Uh, in Jakarta yesterday, I was privileged to take part in a uh, meeting of the tripartite National Labour Committee. So you have the Minister of Manpower chairing the meeting, you have the workers over there, you have the employers over there, and they talk and they work out some of the problems that are there, they discuss the problems that you have. The ILO works on that tripartite basis. We bring together governments, employers mm -hmm. and workers to work out the problems of the world of work. Now ideally dialogue and collaboration is the best way of resolving you know, differences and disputes. Now the last, I mean, you're probably aware, the last uh, few days and recently especially with the hiking of the fuel price or the reducing of the subsidies we've seen lots of demonstrations by 
work and so mm. on. I'm demonstrating your experience, especially within your background as a, from mm. a trade union. Are demonstrations an effective way? Or is it a desirable way of resolving disputes? And uh, yeah, well, I saw the demonstrations when I arrived mm. in Jakarta. I watched them going down the street. Mm. I must say, I thought they were very impressive because they were orderly. The police was very relaxed. It was done, I think, in a very creditable way for Indonesia. Mm. But to answer your question, look, the right to demonstrate, the right to strike eventually, these are fundamental rights. So there is nothing inherently bad or wrong about a demonstration. Mm -hmm. uh, people have the right to do it. But you're quite right. It's not the way you want to do your business every day. It is much preferable that you are able to find solutions to problems through negotiation, through consultations, with the option of a demonstration or a strike, it's there as an ultimate recourse. It's when things cannot be solved otherwise. But certainly it shouldn't be every day. It shouldn't be the regular mode of doing business. So I think we have to balance those things up. Um, and I think Indonesia would be well advised to develop its what we call labor market institutions, its mechanisms of dialogue, its mechanisms for resolving problems in this everyday routine in a meeting room rather than in the street.